Hey up, and welcome to this analysis of democracy. Here in West, we usually think of democracy as a universal good, and don't think about it overly critically. But, like all systems, it's got plenty of flaws. So in this video, we'll analyse both the benefits and the drawbacks of democracy as a system of government. But first, what is democracy? The literal meaning of democracy is rule by the people. In a democratic system of government, the general public can directly decide on government policy through the process of elections. This can be divided into direct democracy where the public directly votes on individual pieces of policy. An example of this would be the Brexit referendum, when the, the, when the public was given the question, do you want to leave the EU? And to 52 to 48%, they voted yes. And we left the EU some time later. The other more common type of democracy is representational democracy and this is where voters vote for politicians to hold elected office and make decisions on their behalf. An example of this would be a general election where you vote for your local MP, they get sent to parliament, one of them becomes prime minister. So what are the benefits of democracy? Well one of the biggest benefits of democracy is the fact that it prevents tyranny through accountability. Politicians are accountable to the electorate and accountable to parliament or some equivalent to it. This means they're not going to do anything that will overly upset the public because they're going to get voted out of office if they upset them too much. This prevents major acts of government overreach usually. Another advantage is it allows everybody with a stake in society to have their say. This is something you rarely get with other systems of government. The laws that are made affect you, so you should have some sort of say in what happens to you. This is one of the main advantages to democracy. Even if that say is usually fairly minimal. It also incentivizes good government or at the least government for the people. The government is incentivized to make you happy so it will do things for your benefit. Never underestimate the fact either that it's a well tested form of government. It was invented in ancient Athens and has long precedent in Britain, America, Europe and around the world despite its flaws and I would say that the political systems of Britain and America have got centuries of proof that they work fine, if not brilliantly, then fine. Moving on to the problems with democracy, one of the biggest is that every vote is equal no matter level of education, knowledge or ignorance. The self-assured idiot has just as much voting power as an Oxford professor when their opinions on certain things certainly aren't equal in validity. It is also often the case that people don't know enough about politics to vote for what's in their own best interest. So often you end up with rubbish leadership. Another reason you end up with flawed leadership is popularity is favoured over competence. A politician can lie through their teeth, offer the world, then get into office and deliver absolutely none of it and make themselves be a complete clown in the process. Usually happens. You also suffer from very short term thinking. They're more concerned about winning the next election 
and long-term prosperity. For example, they'll borrow a load of money to fund welfare programs, which will cause an economic recession later down the line that the next administration has to deal with. In more authoritarian, longer thinking plans are usually put in place because the leaders usually serve for life. Also got the problem that people are far more easily man manipulated than they would like, like to believe that they are. People are susceptible to propaganda, flawed reasoning and just simple plain bad decision making. If somebody has a lot of money to pump into propaganda they can sw sway public opinion and make the public vote for stupid things. If you don't believe me, the Nazi party was democratically elected. And the final major problem with the system is how inefficient it is. You have to get hundreds of people to agree when they usually can't agree on the colour of an orange. This leads to political deadlock and plenty of political chaos. In an authoritarian system of government, this isn't a problem. What the king says, the king gets. There's no deadlock in Saudi Arabia. With the main disadvantage that out of the way, is there any alternatives to democracy? Well, of course there are alternatives to democracy, it's just whether they're any good or not. Usually not. Number one. Absolute monarchy. This, for most of history, was the form of government most people found themselves under. Like democracy, it's a well-tested system and does work. In fact, it's even better tested than democracy. It's also a very stable form of government. Rulers are for life, then their son inherits, unless there's a, there's a succession crisis, everything flows nice and smoothly. And it's also incredibly efficient. One person's decision is the policy of the country. No deadlock required. But obviously, it's got a major, major flaw. Well, two actually. One is it's open to tyranny. Absolute power corrupts after, absolutely after all. And two, it's down to pure, pure lottery whether you get a good leader or not. You might get a leader like Philip II of Macedon, who's absolutely excellent, or Frederick the Great of Prussia. Again, very good. Or you might get a King John of England, who wasn't as good or a, for a more modern e example Edward the Eighth again of England I'm English I know my British kings better than any of the other ones even though I just re referenced a Macedonian one moving on we've got Plato's idea of the old philosopher king the enlightened dictator if you think about it this on paper probably is the finest system because it's got the efficiency of one person ruling. It's got the competence of somebody who knows what they're doing. And it should be fairly fair and fairly good to live under. Though the notable problem with this is one, it's going to be quite unstable given the fact it's very, very rare you find anybody with the moral fortitude to resist corruption of high office, especially when given absolute power. There's certainly a few in history who managed it. I think Marcus Aurelius being the most notable example. The man who was referred to as the philosopher king. As he was quite literally a philosopher who ruled an empire. And did an excellent job. It was also very idealistic. You're not going to find 
one person after another after another all being equally as competent as the last. It just isn't going to happen. After Marcus Aurelius came Commodus. Unless you have a very, very good selection process, it's not going to end up going very well in the long run. Next is oligarchy in its many forms, whether aristocracy, meritocracy, plutarchy, or the other forms. It does have some benefits in that people have usually somehow earned their elite status. However, it is very, very open to corruption. You just have to look at Russia to see that. They usually don't care that much about the people and end up only caring for their own pocket and power. They might be more educated and knowledgeable on certain issues, so things might run slightly more smoothly. But they also are incentivized to prioritize filling their own pockets. Though half the time, democratic politicians aren't much better. They're the classic examples out of the way. However, something's more, slightly more interesting. I recently watched a YouTube video that tackled the same issue I'm currently discussing. They suggested what they called a weighted democracy, where everybody's vote had a different weight depending on how much knowledge they had. Seemed a good system on paper. And I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to know more about it. But I saw that the main flaw of this is it's quite open to abuse since it requires a test to determine the value of each vote. And any manipulation of said test could cause major, major problems. But he was quite open to criticism in his video, so... There's the criticism. And then the next is what I call a tempered democracy. Now this is my own idea. So take it with as much as a pinch of salt as that requires. I don't know everything after all. But at least I'm telling you that in advance. I personally believe the best system would be a mix of the other systems, um, what I consider tempered democracy. This is a system where you have a democratic mandate, elected politicians as usual, but with the oversight of experts and a well-educated monarch. Think of it as if the House of Lords worked properly and the king had more power. That's how I would solve the sort of issues of democracy. Sort of trying to balance the various systems and create an internal power dynamic that self-stabilised. Now this idea isn't necessarily properly fleshed out and probably full of flaws that I can't see. But I consider it a starting point. But with that out of the way, I um, hope it's given you something to think about. It's certainly not the end of my contemplations on the topic. Though, until next time, seven.